Hey everybody, I'm Peter Schremer. I'm a wildlife filmmaker and educator, and I'm excited because you're joining me today on a hike out here in God's creation. I don't know if you've ever seen sandhill cranes before, but uh, they're very big birds. They can be very loud birds, and they're pretty impressive. And I had an experience one time where my wife and I were hiking, and we sat down on a bench in the woods, and the sandhill crane came up to us. Now, the sandhill crane was way too used to people feeding it, which is not a good idea. So it came too close for comfort. So I spoke bird language in that moment. I stood up to my full height and I opened up my arms as wide as I could to look as big as I could. Because in the animal world, that means I'm big and impressive and you don't want to mess with me. Well, the sandhill crane looked at me, had a weird puzzling look on its bird face, and then it jumped into the air and flapped its wings to say, hey, I'm really big too. So I figured that that was the right time to move on in the hike. So that was my exciting sandhill crane experience. And we are going to see some sandhill cranes today on our hike. So I hope you're ready for an adventure. We're going to have fun time together. As a wildlife filmmaker and educator, I've spent most of my life exploring God's creation. From climbing up mountains to canoeing through wetlands and hiking into forests, my love for God's creation has taken me on many outdoor adventures. In each episode, you'll come along with me as we explore this great big world God has made. I hope you're ready for an adventure. I'm Peter Schremer, and this is Hike and Seek. Well, today we are headed down to the Howell Nature Center. And uh, they're a really cool facility that has all kinds of fun things that you can check out. They actually have the largest wildlife rehabilitation clinic in the state of Michigan, which means more animals than anywhere else come right here to be taken care of if they're orphaned or injured. Now, some animals that come into the clinic are not able to be released back into the wild. And when that happens, they become education animals and they join the Wild Wonders Wildlife Park here so that when people visit, they can learn more about God's creation. So today, we are gonna go check out the sandhill cranes that they have here and learn a little bit more about how they feed and take care of them here at the Howell Nature Center. Well, this is Caitlin Lewis, who is the Wildlife Park Coordinator here at the Howell Nature Center. And Caitlin, why don't you share with us a little bit about these sandhill cranes and why they're here at the Howell Nature Center. All right, so we actually have three permanent resident cranes here at the Howell Nature Center. <laughs> the two that are with us right now are Fraser and Niles. They've been here since 1998. Both of them came into our wildlife park due to wing injuries. Uh, in Fraser's case, he has an upper wing injury that causes the wing to permanently droop. And Niles, she has a lower wing injury, so she's able to tuck both wings in tight to the body. You can see her over there on her makeshift nest. However, uh, she cannot fly and neither can Fraser. So what kind of care do these cranes need here in captivity? So their care in captivity pertains mostly to the basics. They've got to have their food, their water, their shelter. But we also have to keep them physically and mentally stimulated. So things like enrichments that are new food items or puzzle toys that they've got to work a little bit harder to get food out of, as well as things that express locomotion, get them moving or calling, being territorial, which they love to do. <laughs> So how do you handle bringing in new cranes to the Howell Nature Center? Do they all get along? So for the first time since these guys arrived in 98, we actually had a permanently non-releasable sandhill crane come in last year, who we called Beaker. Uh, in December of 2019, they were living together, but as we've gotten closer to breeding season, we have some issues with aggression where these two as a mated pair aren't letting Beaker get to food or water sources. So in the meantime, we actually have Beaker living with our bald eagles, Jefferson and Liberty, so that they've got nice, even uh, sharing of all their spaces and their resources instead of these two hogging everything. That's really cool. Could we go see Beaker? Yeah, let's go see her. All right, cool. So Caitlin, tell us a little bit about Beaker here. So Beaker actually came to us in December of 2019. Uh, she was found in a park wandering up to people, picking their pockets. She was borrowing food and car keys and after several calls to Wildside Rehabilitation, they're over in Eaton Rapids, 
they determined that this bird was bonded to people, uh, had either been raised illegally as a pet or had become too friendly from living in a park scenario. And the finder was actually able to load the crane into the car by letting her just walk into the back seat. Well, that's not normal. <laughs> no, no. So it kind of solidified that understanding that this is an imprinted bird who cannot survive in the wild on her own. She thinks she's a person. Gotcha. So what do you feed the cranes here at the Hall Nature Center? So let me go show you. Okay. Uh, they are an omnivore, so we have to have a lot of variety involved in their diet to keep them happy and healthy. One of the things we're offering them today is a mixed berry. We're going to make sure that we have the right amount for each of them. So about 25 grams of that. We're also going to have some hard boiled egg. Uh, this is actually a hard boiled duck egg as well as some smelt today. So some fish to just get up some protein in their diet as well. So we're going to cut that up so it's manageable pieces. as well as the egg, because if they were finding an egg in the wild, it's likely not in good shape. So this kind of mimics that. Get that egg open for them, make it really easy. And then we're gonna add those berries. So Fraser, yeah, he's got that injured beak. More than likely, uh, the best we can put together because he doesn't speak English, uh, is that fracture likely happened from either an impact he ran into the building or a car or it is a nutritional deficiency. But don't worry, he does eat very, very well. Uh, he's able to toss food back towards the back of his mouth, as well as the natural foraging that they'd be able to do, like probing the ground for grubs and insects. Niles does for him, his mate. So she'll actually pull things out for him and feed them to him, easy peasy. Well, that was a lot of fun. I love going to the Howell Nature Center, and it's really neat to see what they do over there. I mean, being able to care for God's creatures that way and uh, to help rehabilitate animals that are injured or have imprinted and even if they're not able to be released back into the wild being able to be part of an education program like that is really important because it allows people like you and me to learn more about the animals that God has made and get to see them up close. Now one of the habitats that uh, cranes love the most is the marsh. They love marshes, whether they are nesting and raising young or whether they're migrating and need a place to stop for the night. Marshes are places that attract sandhill cranes. And so right now we're headed to one of my favorite nature spaces and we're going to go on a hike and we're going to look for sandhill cranes because this area not only has a big marsh, but it is known for having lots of very friendly sandhill cranes. And so I'm excited as we head over here into the marsh. So it's always important to take some stuff with you when you're hiking. I always take a backpack with me to carry things that I might need along the trail. You might want to take a pair of binoculars with you. These are not just for bird watching. It's for seeing anything that you can come across here in nature. Also, I like to take a Bible with me so that I can read God's word out here in his creation. And we'll be doing that a little bit later. And it's important to take some water. You gotta stay hydrated. When your water's half gone, your hike's half over. All right, with that, we should be all set for exploring the marsh. Let's go see what we can find. Well, now we're going to meet up with my friend Phil Varnhagen, who's a wildlife photographer, and chat with him about wildlife photography and what he loves about being out here at the marsh. Well, we're here with Phil, and Phil, I wanted to ask you first, what got you into wildlife photography? Well, uh, I, have, I have been doing photography since I was uh, in high school. Uh, in the past three years I got back into photography, digital photography, and what got me into it is, is I had a health series of health issues and, and this was a good place to come and de-stress. So Phil, tell me, when you're out here taking photos, what do you look for? What sort of, what are sort of the things that catch your eye or that you look for when you're out in nature? So what I look for is anything that is unique, like one of the photos I took uh, recently, um, was a sandhill crane with one baby and one 
with its uh, beak just out of the egg, so still hatching. So things that are unique. So how does being out here help you connect with God? So people talk about their relationship with God um, almost on a, 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 an every Sunday kind of basis. For me, coming out here gives me a lot of time, a lot of solitude to pray. And what I think about prayer is that it's a constant conversation with God. And out here, I can walk around and people might think I'm kind of crazy talking to myself, but, <laughs> um, you know, I'm in prayer. And so that's how it, it uh, helps me connect with God. And, you know, it's when you're out in nature, it, it's almost healing uh, to be out here. And, you know, when you, again, when you see creation, um, God's creation constantly growing and and every year the same thing happening and I mean how you can't beat it look out here I mean look at the wood duck over there it's you know like a painted animal exactly yeah you can see God's brush strokes you Absolutely. know on the creatures that are here and I like what you said about you know that it being so healing because that's the way God made it to be you right know, this is this is a place for us to come out and and to heal mentally and emotionally and physically, you know, it, there's, a, there's a peace that comes with being in God's creation. And uh, I do agree, it's a great place to be able to commune and pray. Right, for know, sure. And connect with God in a place that helps us. We're not distracted out here. Absolutely not. By the screens and the noise and the stimuli that we get from our culture out here. This is, this is God's country. For sure. And we can really, you know, be a little more at peace and hear His voice. Right. And so when I take my photos and uh, post them online and numerous people comment on them and, um, you know, for me, I, I'm trying to get people to come out and firsthand enjoy God's creation. So where around you have you been seeing some of the cranes? Well, typically um, out in the marshland like this, you'll see different nests. Uh, there's a, an old nest right there, but um, just today I saw a pair of uh, sand hills on eggs just down the path that way. Okay, cool. Well, we're going to go look for some. So thank you so much, Phil, for sharing with us today. For sure. I hope you get some more good photos this afternoon. And uh, we're going to go see if we can uh, find some sandhill cranes. Okay, great. Cool. Thanks. Have a good day. So this is a wild sandhill crane, and you'll notice that it looks kind of like a rust color where the ones we saw at the Howell Nature Center were gray, and there's a reason for that. The wild ones out here in the marsh are exposed to iron in the water and the mud, and it actually stains their feathers that color. Now, cranes are part of the crane kind of birds, and there are about 15 species of cranes across the world. We have two species in North America, the whooping crane, which is very endangered, there's only like 500 or so of them left in the wild, and the sandhill crane, where we have more than 650,000 across North America. So you're far more likely to see those. And when you do, you won't miss them. They stand three to four feet tall with a wingspan of six or seven feet. And as you saw at the Howell Nature Center, when they want to be vocal, they can be very, very loud. Cattails are an important plant in marsh and pond habitats. They provide food and shelter to many animals. Cranes use cattails in the springtime to build their island nests out in the marsh to keep their eggs safe. Sandhill cranes mate for life, and they work together to protect their young and teach them how to find food and to survive. The young cranes stay with their parents for almost a year, and when it's time to migrate, their parents show them the way. You know, I love to find quiet times when I'm out in nature to spend a little time in God's Word. And I have some scripture that I'd like to share with you on today's adventure. First one is from Jeremiah 8, 7. It says, Even the stork in the heavens knows her times, and the turtle dove, a swallow, and crane keep the time of their coming. 
Now that's referring to migration. It's saying that all the birds know the time of migration that God has given them. But that's not the only place that cranes are mentioned in scripture. If we go to our next passage here, found in Isaiah 38, 14, it says, like a swallow or a crane, I chirp. Which I think is kind of funny because cranes do chirp, but they also can make really loud noises as we've seen. But the main scripture that I want to share with you guys today is found over in Job. And we look at Job 12, 7 to 10. But ask the beasts, and they will teach you, the birds of the heavens, and they will tell you, or the bushes of the earth, and they will teach you, and the fish of the sea will declare to you, who among all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every living thing, and the breath of all mankind. What that's saying is, is that all the creatures, including the birds, and all of nature declare God's glory. How do they do that? They do that through the beauty that God has put into nature, the amazing ability of animals, the creativity that you see in the natural world. That's what shares God's glory. And when I see that, it encourages me to take care of the animals and the habitats that God has made for them to live. It's kind of like we're God's zookeepers, but for the whole natural world. And that's pretty exciting. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's adventure, hiking out into a marsh and getting to see some sandhill cranes up close. Something you can do is look up if you have any sandhill cranes living in your area. And maybe you could go out on a hike and visit them for yourself. Some of you might even have sandhill cranes that pass through your own backyard. Who knows? But it's an opportunity to think of our Creator when you see a crane outside. So now it's your turn to hike out into God's creation and seek our loving creator. I'll see you next time.